Welcome to the second demonstration of um, Super Impasto, a really thick painting outdoors. This one is painted immediately after the previous version, and I can see I'm taking the previous painting here <coughs> and putting it just in sight so that I can transfer the drawing. So I'm not trying to translate the three-dimensional scene into a two-dimensional design. I've already done that, so I'm just looking at the major divisions from the first painting and marking those out as quickly as possible. So there's a real sense of urgency and excitement because the light has changed significantly, so there's no point trying to copy the scene because the light is completely different. And you'll see how quickly I'm painting here. Within about five minutes, I'll have basically covered this board, which is breakneck speed, far faster than the first painting was possible to do. Because the first one I had to work out the composition and get acclimatized to the to the setting and to the subject, and also to mix the colors. Mixing colors accurately takes a long time. So here I've already got a palette full of colors that are very close to the subject itself. Um, and so I'm also warmed up. Um, and I'm less self-conscious. I'm less thinking about the people walking by and what they're gonna think which you're kind of conscious of when you set off. Um, so it's really the ideal time to, to be painting and to be painting quickly. Um, here I'm not bothered about technique at all. I'm putting paint straight from the tube on the, on the panel and just slapping it on like crazy. It's really great fun, very exciting, very uninhibited. Here I'm going to be uh, scooping up a big lump of paint, scooping it upwards and just laying it on the panel quite thickly. I kind of learned this technique from my kids who use paint very generously, sometimes two-handed with a paintbrush. Here I'm combining paint from the palette, applied with the brush, with a big blob of white paint that's already on the painting. <clears throat> and I'm trying not to tidy it up or mix it too much, to leave those streaks. Some these wonderful accidents, not deliberately premeditated technique, but just what happens when things are going kind of crazy, magic happens in the moment. I tend to uh, put bubble wrap on the back of my painting panels and here I need a squeegee and didn't bring one so I'm using a small painting panel as a squeegee. So first of all removing the bubble wrap from the back and then squeegeeing the, the painting to to soften it all, to blend the edges, to make it more homogenized um, and I never like to waste paint so I'm removing the paint from the edge of the squeegee and putting it back, back on the palette for reuse. Um, I don't want the paint to completely smudge, so I am cleaning it off as I go. Um, and then deliberating. It's not a matter of just squeegeeing the whole thing, but um, maybe going in different directions. Here I might go up a little bit. Um, that path was really thick, so that paint needs to be just thinned out a little bit. So judiciously using the squeegee, but again, it's those happy accidents, things you could spend ages trying to achieve and never actually achieve, but just a bit of craziness can, can do magic stuff. Here I'm reveling in some of the joys of thick paint using 
pretty soft, large brush, heavy loaded with light paint and dragging it quickly across the wet surface to try and suggest the roughness, I suppose, of the texture of the lit tree trunks. Um, suggestion is the word. It's not depicting exactly what I'm seeing, but trying to suggest it with this dragging paint. Really fun stuff. So here I'm applying the paint in short dabs, um, trying to vary the strokes all the time and painting into thick paint. Like some people are frightened of doing it, but it's just so luscious. Yes, it's really unpredictable, but the effects that you get are just so exciting to look at close to and really a fantastic way of mixing color is to paint thick paint, wet in wet. So I could have left the painting at this stage, this more expressionistic mark laden effect. I really do like some of the marks in these photographs and wonder if I shouldn't have left them, but um, I did take it further in terms of realism and I suppose that's closer to my style. So it's finished to this level on site and then to this level in the final statement. Worked back in the studio while the paint was still wet. I am still think it has retained some of those exciting marks. Some of the marks are big, like this big swoosh of paint in the grass, and some are smaller using scratchier brushes to indicate foliage. But this is the final result. <laughs>